Hey everybody, welcome back. This is Brian Gardner, WordPress advocate at WP Engine. Thank you for watching the series. This is the last installment and quite arguably the best one, Global Styles. Let's get started. Okay, so in the last video, I walked through the power of using WordPress patterns to build websites, what they are, how they work and so on. Uh, and in this last installment, I'm going to talk about something equally as important, uh, more so from the design perspective than the building perspective, but it's global styles. Uh, you can see here I've got a Frost uh, install here on my local, and I'm just going to go right into the dashboard and start at it. Uh, so if you go to Appearance and then Editor, you'll see that uh, you have this link called Styles. These are the style variations that ship with Frost. We're not really talking about that when it comes to global styles. We're going to click here on the right-hand side, and we'll see this little circle up here on the right, uh, upper right-hand corner called Styles. And this opens up a panel that's essentially called Global Styles. And this is where uh, builders and users of WordPress get to customize the way things look uh, across the site globally. Uh, as the name insinuates. And it's really powerful because it allows people to do things sort of in the no code way. Uh, as builders of WordPress themes and websites, uh, we can go into these theme files, the theme JSON file and customize sort of what we see here. Uh, but for users of WordPress, people who just wanna download a theme and just start uh, creating their content and doing some design elements, this is for them. You can see here, if I click on this brown, uh, browse styles, this does take me to the uh, the style variations that come with the theme. So like you could just click on these and these are sort of preset colors. Uh, but what we're really looking to uh, dive into is uh, the, the global styles. And so as an example, if you click on colors, you'll see here that the palette that comes with Frost uh, is able to be customized. And so uh, if I wanted to go in and change this blue to any hex code, uh, I'm gonna arbitrarily just pick a color. Uh, obviously that's, uh, not gonna pass uh, contrast accessibility, but uh, what this does is anywhere that uh, is using this primary color throughout the website, in this case, buttons or link colors, uh, or if you have a background that you've applied the primary color to, uh, this will change that in every location. It uses CSS variables and it's very powerful. So you could pull down Frost, use that, uh, and then customize this color palette for clients. Maybe there's a you know two or three brand colors that they have you can very easily just go in and just add their hex codes without having to do any customization uh, from the theme itself. And then they can uh, use this as their own. So I'm gonna go ahead and I'm just gonna hit reset colors and then back up a bit. Uh, you can see here also, if I wanted to um, customize the color of the text, uh, I could do that. Uh, I will just select blue so you can see how this works. So everywhere uh, in, the uh, website experience where there's text, uh, you can change the color to anything you want. Uh, obviously we won't do that. And uh, customizing the background of the whole website, generally we're using white. Uh, for instance, if we wanted to go gray, you can see that sort of shifted uh, the background from white to gray. We uh, obviously don't wanna do that. Uh, link colors and hover, you can actually manage through global styles. Uh, this is actually a really big uh, feature that's used uh, it, very easily. If you want to, you know, change the color of the links um, in here to blue. I don't actually have any links. There we are uh, down here at the bottom. Uh, and then let's just, you know, let's just go with, uh, I use gray as an example. You can see there that the hover then works. Uh, again, no code solutions. That's really what global styles is for. Uh, if I wanted to do um, special tr treatment of color. You can see here that these headings uh, have changed to this darker blue. And so really powerful stuff here. So outside of colors, um, layout, this is something that's generally uh, used probably a little bit less. If you uh, have you know, constraints or wanna change the dimensions of the width of either the sort of the, the outer band of the website here from the left-hand side to the right-hand side. I'll change that just so you can see what happens. Uh, so let's just say 960, you can see that that changes that. And then the content area, usually found in a blog post or a standard WordPress page where all the text is, uh, currently sits at 640. And so uh, that's what layout does. And then typography is a big one. Uh, not only with the addition of WordPress 6.5 can 
uh, you go in, and I'll do it right now, you can actually upload your own custom fonts to the website. You can install fonts from Google, uh, which I'll do here. I'm just gonna install Enter. I'll select these all pretty quickly. And you'll see that this should hopefully install. Now I've got Enter. If I close out of here, what I can do now, you can see here, these are the installed fonts. Uh, I can, on a global level, take all text elements and switch it to Enter. You can see everything here. Uh, this is a logo, that's why that didn't change, but um, the navigation text, the heading text, uh, and uh, that is powerful. You can change the size. Uh, here, let's do this. We can see this is the default. Uh, maybe enters a little bit larger font than outfit, so you can change uh, the size of all of the text. Uh, generally, this refers to the body text, which handles sort of paragraphs and stuff like that. Because of CSS specificity, uh, headings are treated differently. And you can see here as I go back in the typography panel, headings also can be uh, customized as well. So let's just say maybe I wanted to make all of my headings. You can see here there's this little slider here. So right now it's all H1 through H6. If I wanted to change one specifically, I could do that. Uh, so you've got this here. Uh, and maybe I want to go back to outfit. Maybe uh, for whatever reason, I want to use two different fonts. Uh, you can see here uh, some of my fun colors from before come through. Uh, you could change the size, the letter spacing. Maybe you want all your headings to be uppercased. And so again, the global styles really allows you to sort of determine a lot of things at a high level, 30,000 foot level. Uh, and so, um, you know, as an, another example, I'll come down here. Uh, you can change uh, the text. This is, we're still in typography. Uh, so if for some reason I wanted to make um, my buttons bigger and maybe uppercase, I could do that. And then what I'll do is uh, show you back here in colors, uh, one of the options also for, uh, in the colors, you can change the color of the, uh, that's the text. Let me go back. I'm going to change the background. Uh, maybe you want to make it the darker blue. Uh, you could also do that as well. So this is, again, like I said, really powerful stuff. And if you want to get even more granular, uh, and this is a bit of a Pandora's box, but it allows you to do what you want to do, is in the global styles here, you can see there's a blocks tab. And if you click that, what it does is it allows, it pulls up the list of all WordPress core blocks. And they're kind of, the order of them is a little bit weird because they sort of do like the most popular ones here at the top. And then I think it kind of goes down into uh, alphabetize uh, order, but you can always do something like this um, where you can go in and at a global level, specifically with the, um, you know, for instance, uh, let's say maybe you want to go to outfit, maybe you want the size to go smaller and so on. Uh, you can customize things globally at the block level. Uh, again, you just type in whatever you want, but if you wanted to you know, handle some of the styling, maybe on social icons, uh, you can change some of these settings. And so when you hit save, what that does, and it asks you to confirm these are all the things that you've changed, uh, you go ahead and hit save. And then if I refresh this, you'll see everything changed on the front end. Of course, some of these colors are suspect just based on the demonstration. Uh, and then uh, one other good thing is if uh, these changes get saved to the database, just as an FYI, uh, these do not go back to the theme. And the reason behind that is if WordPress themes have updates available, uh, what you do here with these changes in global styles gets saved to the database, which means the theme update can update without um, anything getting overwritten. Now, say you did a whole bunch of changes and you realized these are all bad color choices or whatever. Uh, you can go up to global styles tab here, these three little buttons and do reset styles. And what that'll do is it'll revert everything back to the themes settings, which you can see right here. Uh, if I go ahead and hit save, uh, you'll see then uh, as I refresh my screen, it just goes back to the theme default. And so uh, be a little bit wary there because sometimes people accidentally reset it thinking they're only gonna reset one setting and it resets all of them. So, uh, but again, this is a really good way to uh, customize sites uh, using a base theme, either of your own or one you download from wordpress.org. And uh, global style is really important thing for designers and it allows people to go in and add fonts, change colors, sizes, all that kind of stuff 
And uh, again, one feature I really love about WordPress is the ability for users to have this. So I really hope you enjoyed the series. If you have any comments or questions relative to this presentation, feel free to put them in as a comment on the video and I will get back to you as soon as I see it. And I appreciate you following along and uh, keep on WordPressing. Have a great day.